Today we'll cover the prop techniques you need to know for text-to-image and text-to-video tools. I'll demonstrate a lot today on Mid-Journey, but this will work on Runway, Stable Diffusion, Kyber, Pika Labs, pretty much anything else, because these AI models are all trained on film and photography terminology. I'll share a full prompt guide through a link in the comments, but I'm here to mostly just teach you one to two word prompts that do a ton on their own, so let's get started. If you want to use Midjourney like I'm about to use, Google Midjourney Discord. Once signed in, just click a channel that says newbie on the left hand side, backslash imagine in the input box, and you are good to go with your prompt. For a quick overview of how to prompt, the best prompts use clear, specific descriptions in everyday language. This gets you more predictable outcomes. You're going to see some abstract poetic stuff later, but those often yield unexpected results and we want predictability. There's a rhythm the AI models tend to understand. Begin by specifying the image's subject and content. Right off the bat is when you want to mention it's a woman sitting on a chair or an astronaut on an alien planet, a spaceship in an asteroid field, whatever it is. And this is also a good time to use an adjective like beautiful woman, massive spaceship. Second to that, mention the action. The woman is looking upwards. The astronaut is planting a flag. And for the third part of your description, you want to go into an actual descriptor for the activity. There's a sense of dread. They are planting the flag with pride. And then finally, you can get into the overall atmosphere and mood and really make the scene here by saying something like, it's a rain-soaked morning with a depressing mood. Once you have that down, now all you need is the film and camera techniques that make for a good photograph. Now for a shorter lesson, we'll look at aspect ratio. This refers to the relationship between an image's width and its height. Here are the aspect ratios you need to know. There's only three of them. Use these in your prompt. 16 to 9 is the standard you're used to for anything modern that you're watching on your TV or your computer. 4 to 3 is for classic TV, the stuff you're used to in the 80s and 90s. And for something really cinematic, 1.85 to 1 and 2.39 to 1 are usually what you're seeing at the theaters with 2.39 being the most common nowadays. So aspect ratio can really influence your experience. A 2.39 aspect ratio can make an audience soak in a sweeping big landscape. And a 4.3 can be used for nostalgia or even feeling a sense of claustrophobia for a minute. You might even want to stretch out to a wider screen temporarily to make a character seem isolated and alone. Depth of field helps you focus on a specific subject and it creates a cinematic blur on everything else. A shallow depth of field has a small area in focus and is often used for portraits and close-ups, while a large depth of field keeps everything sharp and it's perfect for landscape shots. Depth of field prompts can not only make your shots look better, but they also direct attention. For example, if you want to show a man falling in love with a woman, a very shallow depth of field will make the viewer understand he's 100% fixated on her. You could suddenly snap back into a deep depth of field and it's back to reality for him. I use shallow depth of field frequently to make images look much more striking, but also to ensure the viewer is focused on the things I want them to be focused on. A cool prompt is the bouquet effect, which will add a mesmerizing effect on lights in the background. And last off for depth of field is getting really specific by giving an aperture setting. The lower F number, like an F1.8, is like a dilated pupil. The camera starts letting in more light and it creates a shallow depth of field. A higher number, like F16, restricts light and it results in a deeper depth of field. So play with the numbers in between to get the exact amount of blur or sharpness that you're looking for. On to one of the most important ones, lighting. There are lots of prompts that impact your lighting. The easiest is just describing the time of day to mid-journey or runway or another tool and letting it figure out the exposure from there. But lighting can have a huge impact on the appearance and I have a collection of tips here. So some notable photography techniques using exposure are overexposure, underexposure, and double exposure. Overexposure is when a photo is taking in too much light. A good use is in high key photography, which uses overexposure to eliminate all shadows and convey a feeling of positivity and lightheartedness. Underexposure is when there's not enough light. A good use is low key photography, which only illuminates specific parts of an image. This often results in a dramatic or moody aesthetic. Finally, double exposure is a technique that helps you superimpose one image over another. You can see I'm making it clear in this image of John Lennon that I wanted to be combined with the New York landscape. Where the light is coming from is very important, so side lighting is one I use very often in my prompts. 
Having light come from one side can make a shot look much more dramatic, and when outdoors, it can also give a sense of realness to the position of the sun. Backlighting is a lighting technique where the main light source is behind the subject. The light distinguishes the subject in the background in this case, giving them a clear outline. It also creates a lot of atmosphere as you see when you switch focus from the backlit woman with the umbrella to the lights above her. Not far off from backlit images are silhouettes. And though my prompts can get very descriptive here, remember that you can just start small, use simple keywords, and still get a great, sometimes even better result. So in this example, the use of a silhouette creates the sense that there is something much bigger and more full of power and energy than the little silhouette of the spaceman. The opposite of this technique is front lighting, which has the light source in front of the subject. It can be very effective at portraying light emanating off an object in front of the subject to give it a sense of mystery and wonder. Finally, top lighting, as the name suggests, is when the primary light source is coming from above the subject. This type of lighting can be very effective for film noir and horror genres. There's a lot of genre techniques and lighting techniques that I haven't gone into. Look for a link in the comments for a longer list and I'll send you a document. So now let's get into a technique called framing. Framing is when you choose what fits in the borders of your shot and what doesn't. This is especially important for AI videos and filmmaking. It's one of the most impactful things of visual storytelling because you are making decisions on what to emphasize and how to convey meaning visually and setting the whole tone. When prompting Midjourney or any other generative AI tool, there's 10 types of shots you need to know or at least have sitting on a list somewhere. Let's go through them with very simple prompts. So the first is a close-up. A close-up frames a character's face or an object in detail and is often used to emphasize emotions or the significance of that subject. An extreme close-up is when it's a magnified version of a close-up, usually so you can focus on a very specific detail, such as an eye or a piece of jewelry. A medium shot captures the subject from the waist up. It's often used in dialogue scenes. It's a good blend of detail and intimacy. Long shots capture the subject from a distance in their entirety, often along with their surroundings as well. This is great for establishing a scene. Extreme long shots are typically used to show large exterior environments. This is often used to show something like a large building so that before the scene takes place, you know the setting of where the characters are going to be. Over the shoulder shots are taken from behind a person's shoulder and it's often used in dialogue scenes to show the conversation from a specific character's perspective. It can also be used to show them soaking in their surroundings. The two-shot frames two subjects together, typically in a medium or a close-up framing. It's often used in scenes of dialogue or physical altercation between two main characters. A low-angle shot positions the camera so it's looking up at the subject. This can make characters look dominant, powerful, or even menacing. A high-angle shot is when the camera's positioned high, obviously, looking down at the subject, and this can make a character appear weaker or make it clear that they are planning something. And finally, a point-of-view shot is the shot that represents the perspective of a character, so that we look at things the way they look at things. Midjourney, though, also allows you to enter parameters, and as we saw earlier, aspect ratio was a parameter that we triggered with a hyphen. Well, Midjourney can also allow you to reference an image, and it gives you a parameter that you can change to decide how influential you want that image to be versus your text prompt. It also allows you to enter a seed, which can be used to make your shots more consistent. You can go to an existing Midjourney shot you've already done, or someone else's, copy that seed, and paste it into your next prompt to get something very similar. Of course, we didn't cover every parameter or every technique. We didn't even cover genre today, but I'm putting that in a doc through a link in the comments that you can find, and we'll cover it through there. Thanks for watching.